Disclosure was invited by the Panzermuseum Munster and this video contains advertisement. The M113 armored personal carrier is an extremely versatile vehicle that is used in many other roles as well. In this video I first let you know what a German combat engineer currently serving in Ukraine thinks about it and then I will discuss it further with Tobias, a former Leopard 2A6 gunner. Now the combat engineers considers the M113 a very good vehicle, although with the caveat as long as he doesn't have to use it. The reason for this is that he considers tanks and armored vehicles generally as death traps. Based on my knowledge and statistics I would disagree with him here, although he has survived a substantial time on the front line and is clearly not a regular infantryman. He particularly likes on the M113 that it's extremely versatile and robust. There is a tremendous amount of different variants for the M113, like battlefield ambulance, armored personnel carrier, infantry fighting vehicle, command vehicle and many more variants. Additionally many weapons and other stuff can be mounted on top of it. He particularly notes that the armor protection is, how should I put it, rather bad, yet that its strong suit is mobility and here it can reach nearly everything or pass through most terrain although he assumes that the Russian MTLB is a bit more mobile. He then talks about comfort. In this department the M113 is also severely lacking. In his experience the suspension is basically non-existent. As such every pebble and stone will be felt, particularly since the interior is also rather bare. He still has scars from his ride and describes it like riding in a hot, tight, dark tin can. In short he describes the comfort level as don't complain, you wimp. He notes that the room is rather limited and that driving on the roof is not particularly recommendable since the driver will not hear anything that is going on outside. So if somebody drops off or something, no chance. In this experience the Russian MTLB has a roof that is a bit more pleasant. Before we switch to the discussion with the Leopard 2 gunner, a short announcement about our t-shirts and books. Currently I have a limited time offer of my cat person t-shirt designs particularly one with the Leopard 2A4 and other German tanks. If t-shirts are not your cup of tea, you might want to check out books from our publishing house, the Military History Group. If you like well-researched books with footnotes, be sure to check out the links in the description. Hello everyone, we are today in the Panzermuseum Munster and I'm here with a former Leopard 2 gunner and we talk about the M113, the workhorse of the Ukraine war. Now, we really like to talk about the Leopards, the Leopard 1, the Leopard 2, the T-72, the T-80, the Challenger and all the heavy main battle tanks, but what usually gets overlooked are the more logistic, or versatile vehicles like the M113 from the western side and of course from the eastern block you have the MTLB, which they look quite different but serve many similar roles because they're both very multi-purpose vehicles that are both tracked. The MTLB is a bit shorter and longer. Um, yeah. And overall, it's, it's, you could compare them. I mean, Butya, the, the German combat engineer, basically said, yeah, it's like the M113, you can compare it. So, of course, they look a bit different. And one major difference is this is one is made of aluminium. And this particular version was a command vehicle. So, there's armor personnel carrier, command vehicles, um, how you call it, medivac vehicles. Yeah, I think you have a mortar variant. You can also transfer it in, in, into an IV, an infantry fighting vehicle, if you put a, a proper turret on it as well. But it also has its weak points and it's also quite dated. So what is your opinion? Well, my opinion, it's a vehicle that most of the people will uh, connect with the Vietnam War. Let's say it this way, it's very old. It was built for uh, during the Cold War, with the aim of the Cold War and the beginning of the Cold War. Infantry fighting vehicles wasn't a thing already, it was only the APCs. So you have a very thin armor because this vehicle was meant to be mobile, to go everywhere and uh, don't sink in. While more heavier weapons like BMPs would shred it to pieces, also like close artillery hits with shrapnels would cause damage to it. It has some benefits that it has the hatch in the rear, that the crew can dismount to the rear, and that also the driver is. Uh, part of the main fighting compartment that he go out uh, to the rear. It has also a front hatch, right? He can go up. He can go up. But, but there's a major... There's the engine. You have ah. the engine here and you have the 
ah, okay. and then comes the fighting compartment to the rear. And uh, so this is for for the two, this is for the maintenance. Yes, yes. Be have. Because I, I remember seeing and and as a child I think I thought it was like a hedge for opening, but now I realize yeah yeah this yeah. is like bad memories. <laughs> yeah, that's the engine basically. The thing is it has uh, at the rear some hedges for infantry for example looking out, and then you have also a bigger hedge in the middle for either a heavy machine gun or ATGM or what you want to use. For example, Germany used them uh, temporarily. As for the grand, uh, Grandiers, Panzergrenadier, with ATGMs and uh, heavy machine guns in pairs, like that you have one with a heavy machine gun, one with the ATGM to deploy it. But the thing is, it is mobile. It has the benefit of having a track compared to, let's say, a MRAP. But it also has like the disadvantage that normally you trade the visibility from inside your vehicle with the armor. So you have the protection, but you count in less visibility, less uh, battlefield awareness. But this armor is dated. It's clearly shown that it's not on a standard like, say, a Bradley in survivability, or even a Marder is better armored. We have the CV90s. Those are systems that are better protected. So this should be more like in a transport role to the front line, yeah, but, but not, not at the front line. Yeah, on the front line for breakthroughs. That's uh, yeah. nothing it can do. What it is actually better is it's better than like cars, like no armor at all. Yeah. Thin armor is always better, so you can reinforce troops, you can pull out troops, you can send med medivacs with it. Uh, and there's a point where you can use it. You can use it as a mobile motor platform, obviously, because a lot of this conflict happens in indirect fire on both sides. That's a possibility with this vehicle. But overall, I think uh, it's a dated vehicle, it shows its age. We can't deny it. Same as MTLB, it also shows its age, but uh, it's not useless. I, I guess one of the main benefits, I assume, is the availability. Like yes. everyone has them, and there was a such a huge number built of this vehicle. And and I assume there's also a lot of personnel that can repair them, they can handle them, and so Ukraine gets a lot, and they can can then use them. And also for logistical reasons, I mean, this is very very useful vehicle also for medivac, I assume as well. But what I see in this conflict that these vehicles are in direct uh, contrast or in the competition with MRAPs. MRAPs are mine resisted, ambush protected vehicles, mostly wheeled or completely wheeled vehicles that are designed to withstand mines. While this vehicle is not built to withstand mines, so you have the MRAP that is more mobile than the M113. It is faster and it has often the same level of protection while giving you the visibility of a wheeled vehicle. You have like windows to all directions. But I think it also has a higher silhouette, right? It's yes, generally there are higher. Vehicles that are way higher. That's that's also due to the mine protection that you have more space and then you have a, a shaped armor to a certain degree. And usually, also ideally, you have like the the mountings of the seats is in in a special way done that if the bottom plate get hit that you don't break your spine if you sit in them. So there, there are various, various other features these have, and these are basically a, a result of counterinsurgency wars, and they're partic particularly made against IEDs. Yes. But so also, I guess, way more expensive as well, I assume. Yeah, because uh, MRAPs are mostly new vehicles that get sent, or factory even new vehicles, while these vehicles often have like 60, 50 years already on their lifespan. But the point is, it's tracked, it gives it um, advantages in heavy terrain, especially in mud. And also the M113 is amphibious. That's something an MRAP also doesn't have. Uh, but I suspect it's about as amphibious as the BMP, so take it with a grain of salt. More amphibious than be the stone. Be because, yeah, yeah, I, I, mentioned, I, I, I remember I made the, how well amphibious the BMP is, and quite many people, I think, actually know that, yeah, it's similar to an M113 and know that they are experienced. Yes, but it uh, gives you at least the possibilities, at least for example, smaller rivers that you can actually cross with it yeah. without the need of bridge layers or the need of fighting around bridges and bridgeheads. So it has some advantages over MRAPs, but also some disadvantages. But I wouldn't say it's... N I wouldn't say it's useless. It has yeah. its purpose. Definitely. Okay, anything to add? No. Okay, then big thank you. And thank you to the Panzer Museum Monster and thank you to Andy behind the camera. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.